applies when you look at black people, the closer you get to the mother country, the more evidence of Africa you see in their speech. Black people in the South, especially them in South Carolina and Georgia where the Gula and the Geechee's live, okay? There's a brother who's a pediatrician at the hospital where I work. His name is Ernest Smith also. He was a Geechee, and he was the one to let me know the difference in the Geechee's and the Gula. Okay, but I want y'all to invite him out here so he can run it down to you. Be sure to ask him. Okay, but y'all have heard of the Gullah Islands and the islands off the coast of South Carolina. And you've heard of all the people out there in the Caribbean. That dog eat crazy, man. He no, no fire. That dog eat crazy, he no, no fire. What is that dog eat crazy, he no, no fire? That dog is crazy. It doesn't know fire. That dog is crazy, he no no fire. If you arm where you better cover arm. If you arm where you better cover arm. If your arms are wet, you better cover arm. If your arms are wet, you better cover them. Okay, the more you closer you get to Africa, the more evidence of what I'm talking about you're gonna find. And it's gonna be the same sounds that are not being distributed. The people in Jamaica, the people in the Caribbean, whether it was Papua Mento, the people in Suriname, the people in Haiti, they have modified the French language the same way we modified English. They have modified the Spanish language the same way we modified the language up here. Everywhere you find Africans in diaspora, you find the linguistic continuation of Africa in those European languages that we have been introduced to. And it is obscured by the profuse borrowing of words. You see, the English language itself is nothing but a bastardized German. When the English came to the island of Britain, they were hired by a Celtic king by the name of Vertigern. The people who were there were called, Ro or the Romans were there, fighting people called the Scots and the Picts. These were called Celtic people. It's spelled C-E-L-T. They spell it Celt. These are the Irish, the Scottish, the Gaelic, the Welsh. Those are Celtic people. They're not the same as your Germans. Your German people are your Dutch, your Danish, your Swedes, your Austrian, and your English people. The English came from Germany as mercenaries hired by this Celtic King Vertigern to help him fight the Romans. And when they ran the Romans out, the Germans kept coming and took over. The word English is derived from the word English, A-N-G-L-I-S-H. That's where English comes from. The Anglo-Saxons who came from Germany speaking English, a dialect of German. This was in 549 A.D. They stayed there and they were dominating everything until 1066. There was a Frenchman by the name of William the Conqueror who brought the French army in from France and the French began to dominate the island. The parliament, the Catholic church, all of the uh, public affairs and diplomatic affairs were done in French. But the masses of the people on this island still spoke this English mixed up with some of this Celtic language. The result has been, if you look at any dictionary today, you will find that 90% of what is considered to be the English vocabulary comes from Latin and French. Look at any dictionary, Funk and Wagner's, Random House, American Heritage, Webster's, I don't care. Look at the etymology of 90% of the words. You will see that the English language is nothing but a bastardized German. What do we mean? The English language has a German grammar, but it has French and Latin words in it. The English language does not just drop out the sky pure. In fact, there is a dialect in English of English in England that they consider the correct English is called RP, the received pronunciation. That's whatever the King of England or the Queen of England talk like. That's what good English is in England. Over here we have this thing called Standard American English. Okay? Standard American English is an ideal. Don't nobody speak it. It's some Midwestern white boys have gotten together 
And most of us who come up on it have had speech pathologists and teachers trying to make us keep your teeth together and move those big, thick lips so that you can correctly teach the king's English. That real betcha by golly wow, you understand? If you don't sound like a Midwestern white homosexual, you're not speaking good English. I'll tell you what it is. They have decided what ideally competent English is, and it approximates the usage of a Midwestern white male homosexual. Yes, Ain't nobody learned how to speak like that in their home environment. If you go to the South, the white boy down there tell you, memorize me, boy. The Southern white man has been so influenced by Ebonics, you can go to a restaurant. Let me give you an example. M-I-K-E, Mike, right? Microphone or somebody's name, Mike. But if I say, what difference does it, Mike? If I say, what difference does it, Mike? Now, what does Mike mean? What difference does it make? Give you another example. M-I-N-E-E-Y-E-S, mine eyes, right? That's the spelling, M-I-N-E-E-Y-E-S, like the battle hymn of the republic, mine eyes are seen the coming. Okay, if I go to a restaurant and I say, will you put some mine eyes on it, please? <laughs> now what's mine eyes? <laughs> Mayonnaise or somewhere else. I was down there in the football game in Texas, and an old white girl was kicking her legs up in the air, and she was talking about, fuck, 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 team, fuck, 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 team, fuck. I said, well, what, what, they got some kind of secret weapon here. Yeah, she was saying F-I-G-H-T, but the way she was saying fight sounded like she was saying fuck. You understand? Fuck, 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 team, fuck. You want a fuck, boy? Okay. The southern white man has been influenced by Ebonics. And so if you want to know why the southern white man don't sound like white people at YL, he'll tell you, memorize me, boy. Okay? Southern Ebonics don't sound like Ebonics in New York. Okay? But there's a thread that makes Ebonics the same. What are we talking about? When you talk about Ebonics, I've given you first some structural evidence that Ebonics is not English in its phonology. But I said in the beginning that all language begins as a thought. And so when you pose the question, what are the common kinds of experiences and common intersecting events in the lives of slave descendants of African origin. When you talk about the hell, degradation, and oppression, it don't matter whether you down south or up south, the common kind of experience is that you have been beat, kicked, raped, robbed, used, abused, made a tool, a fool for 400 years.